Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about onboarding processes. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, can you describe the ideal process for how to onboard a junior into a new company and a new, co new code base? So that's a great question. There was a bit of a story here as well where this person was stating basically that he felt that he was being slow and he was perceived as being ineffective at his new company and so forth. So I wrote back and I asked, are we talking about the perspective of the company or the perspective of the junior? Because there are two ways of looking at this. The one way is to say that, okay, how is a junior supposed to act in order to get onboarded the quickest? because I already have a video about that where I talk about like getting familiar with the code and like all of this stuff, right? But this time we're gonna talk about it from the perspective of the company. So the short answer is that from the perspective of the company, they need two things. They need a mentor and they need a, a roadmap, like in a story roadmap for the junior. So what do I mean by that? Well, I will elaborate on that. So. The mentor, the first point, is probably the most important point of all. You need to, as a company, to accept the fact that you have just hired a junior resource. And in other words, that means that this is an inexperienced program, and not just in, in your company, but also career-wise. Every single company that hires a new, new dis, like de developer of some sort has a I guess some type of onboarding process because if you didn't it would be absolute then you are the problem because even a master programmer will not be able to understand all of your business just because you put the code in their hands it's going to take too long so what you usually have is some people around that you can ask questions of but when you're dealing with a junior you actually have to go even further you have to say to a senior or a mid-level programmer that you are directly responsible for this junior and their productivity. It is your job to make sure that this goes well. This commitment needs to happen, otherwise it's going to get really, really bad. Because if you don't actually allocate capacity for this individual to do this, they will feel, in, in quite a lot of cases, they will feel like they're being forced to carry around this this junior person and at the same time deliver at the same speed on their own work and you, then you're putting them in a really hard position some people who have a high level of empathy will prioritize the junior which is the thing i mean if you, that's the whole point why are you getting this junior Other, like it's a it's a resource that is supposed to help you go even faster so if you don't invest in that and you actually lose out on that resource because you're not investing then like what's the point you have to invest the other way of looking at it is that this person then is going to prioritize their own work over that junior. And that is, that's, that's exactly what leads to this, right? So by getting a buddy or a mentor, investing in that person, uh, telling that uh, senior developer that you are responsible for this individual, then you make sure that the junior has someone to talk to, someone to ask questions of, someone that they feel comfortable. Ideally, this should be an individual that has a fairly high level of empathy and social skills. It doesn't even have to be your best programmer. It just has to be someone that they can shoot ideas off, that can answer technical questions about the domain and knows where things are and so forth. It, as I said, it doesn't have to be a master programmer. It just has to be someone who has more knowledge that can answer questions. Or even if they can't answer the question, act as a liaison between the junior and other people at the company because the junior is going to be scared shitless for the most part of all of these more senior developers. And if you have super senior developers that may or may not be super invested in making sure that this person has a good time, having an individual that actually already is in the company and acts as a liaison makes it much easier for that junior to feel comfortable talking to more senior experiences. That is what the job of that mentor is. That's the whole point of this. So that's number one. Get that allocated resource from your company to make sure that this goes well. Second thing is that you need a story roadmap. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean that as a junior, you are going to be very overwhelmed. There's a lot of things to learn in the beginning. That means that the best thing for the company to do here is to plan the productivity phases and the onboarding, or rather the onboarding phases 
in several steps. So the first step is going to be within the first two weeks. So before the junior starts, it is vital for you to plan out bite-sized tasks. Tasks that are just perfectly scoped and very uh, on the peripheral, on the outskirts of the code base. In other words, it's non. It doesn't have to be critical work. It can be important work, but it doesn't have. It does not necessarily have to be the most important thing that you have. Ideally, you should have something that is fairly low risk, fairly and fairly, fairly small in the, for the first two weeks, and just have stories to make sure that you allocate capacity for that. Right. Because those, those first two weeks are going to be spent mostly by the junior to just get the feeling for, okay, these are the build tools, these are the processes, this is how we do code reviews, this is how we do testing. This, these two first weeks, like you can almost forget about having even a senior developer be like super, super productive unless they are truly, truly, truly good at what they do. Like it's, that's like a learning curve just to get the basics of the project and that's why you want to make sure that you're allocating stories that can be delivered in just a day or two days or something like that so they can get a few tries at working with this process with their body of course. Then after those first two weeks you can start moving them in towards stories that are what I call exploratory coding for them. It's not exploratory coding for the senior that you, you have allocated to them. But the following stories should ideally span over a few more weeks where you basically try to find, again, well-scoped, well-defined stories that, allow, that touches the heart of the project. Because every code base has like a king or, or a heart or something like that. There's a few core features that make up most of your business. That's what you want because now they're going to be in on the, deep, in the deeper end of things and they're going to have tons and tons and tons of questions. And that's where the body is there, to, why the body is there to, to help out or the, the mentor to yeah, help them now get familiar with the domain because the domain is the next part. They need to know how all of these different parts of the code actually works. This phase here could span quite a lot of time. It can be a few weeks, it can even be months depending on how junior or how good this person actually is. So that's the next investment you want to make. And then finally, when you have spent a decent amount of time on this stage, which is a very, this is a stage where they're kind of semi-productive or kind of self-reliant, right? Then the last part is that you want to give them a project, which is even bigger than this, where we're not talking about just bite-sized um, stories here. We're basically talking about a deliverable that is product size where you have maybe an, an epic of some sort with several different stories that you make them directly responsible for. They still have their mentor during this phase. So the reason why you want to do this is because now you want them to learn how to take ownership over some part of the code base. You want to make them a domain expert in one part of the code because this is going to build confidence and commitment to the company for them. So. What you want is to have the mentor take a less and less active role within their personal development. They should be involved less and less. And this is the final stage where that mentor is still sort of going to be on the radar for this junior. They're going to be around, but the junior is more or less responsible for delivering this project. It doesn't have to be a massive project. It just has to be something that they can do in like a week. It has to span a longer period of time and they should be forced to deal with stakeholders and like all of this stuff that most of the seniors do. They just need to have that mentor as a safety net to help out, to feel like, they, to get that sensation that, oh, I'm do actually doing this in the right way, I'm thinking this, but is that like, because they have all this doubt and that's what the mentor is there to help them with, to answer questions and help with that self-doubt. So the average time, I would say, it will take you to onboard correctly a junior developer is going to be between say three months six months sometimes it can take a year or more depending on how like how junior we're talking about if you if the goal is to have them completely self-reliant without any help from anybody else 
because it takes a lot of t it's, it is a big investment to get a junior developer depending on how fresh they are. And what I argue is that if you are a company that is going to consider investing into junior developers, then you should be aware of that you were talking at least three to six months before they become so completely self-reliant unless you're literally only hiring people with like almost, I would say I don't think I've ever met a junior that was completely self-reliant in a shorter period of time. Most people who are self-reliant quicker than that are mid-level programmers. So like they've been already been doing this for a few years and like they're not fresh out of school or anything like that. So I would say that unless you want, if you as a company need self-reliant programmers pretty much from day one or like within just a few weeks in, to, to, make an, uh, to make this investment in, to somebody, I highly recommend that you don't hire juniors. Then I would suggest you just hire mid-level programmers and try to find the mid-level programmers who have, who are open to actually having a lower salary because you have mid-level programmers as well that are fairly self-reliant, but they're not very good at business and they might not have a high level of self-confidence. So what I want you to take away from this is that the two things that are a big factor in order to make a smooth process for onboarding a new junior is number one, you need a mentor, a person that you literally point at and say, you are responsible for making this junior productive because it is your job to do this. They might need to, the mentor needs to feel that they have time and resources and capacity to help the junior and the junior needs to have someone they feel comfortable with that can answer all the questions. It doesn't have to be the best programmer in the world that you're allocating, but it should be a fairly, um, um, uh, a fairly social programmer that can do pair programming and sort of stuff of this nature. Second thing you need to do is that you need to prepare a story roadmap where the first two weeks of stories are bite-sized that are allowing the junior to just try out the basics of the project. The following weeks should be followed with learning stories that helps them understand the domain, the heart of your business. And the last sets of stories should be a project level type of thing where they, by the end of delivering that, they are going to be the domain expert of one section of the code, which gives them a sensation of ownership and commitment to the company. They will feel more confident, basically. And lastly, make sure that if you're investing in juniors, that you have a, an allocated time period of at least three to six months where you kind of expect them to be um, not that super productive. Because if you want things to happen even faster than that, I highly recommend that you just start with mid-level programmers instead because it takes a while to get a junior self-reliant. Have a great day.